I can't say that the Mississippi River where I live is the most beautiful place in the world. It's not exactly Sylvan. We're surrounded by power line towers and power plants across the river and grain elevators. But it's a place where I wake up in the morning and look out my window and there's always movement. The river is, is moving and there's ships going by and there's birds flying by and it's just alive. The place where I live, the place where I'm sitting right now, uh, is a place that's called the Batcher. And it refers to this place that's outside of the levee, that's on the edge of the city of New Orleans. Most people in the city aren't even aware where I live exists. And a lot of that can be attributed to the fact that this community is invisible. It can't be seen from the city side of the levee. Levees were built because the river periodically flooded and the colonists found themselves wading through the streets. And those levees got higher and higher to where the river is very much separated from people's vision and from their lives. In many ways, you can look at the Batcher as an outsider's community, but it's not a planned community. It was uh, a place that was settled by opportunists who found uh, a beautiful spot where they could build their lives outside of a lot of the restrictions that existed in the city. The first news report of houses on the river was in the 1880s, and a reporter from the newspaper, the Daily Picayune, came out and found hundreds of people living along the riverfront. Most of them were people that came down the river so this place was settled uh, by people that were on shanty boats, and eventually some of them grew legs and became camps. The people that settled on the river here made their living on it as fishermen or wild bird trappers or uh, accumulating driftwood for sale to the uh, steamboats that would go up and down the river. It also was a place where people could settle and it was a uh, free and unused land. They were essentially developing uh, a frontier. The river gives us things here. This, this is a place where things grow and things arrive. And uh, there can be no better place to be a person who enjoys the find than the banks of the Mississippi River, where any manner of things might wash up. People have often referred to Batcher dwellers as squatters. But nobody called us squatters until they wanted the land. The big displacement was in 1954 when hundreds of camps were destroyed so that the side of the surface of the levee uh, could be uh, layered with concrete. Those businesses that built along the levee with the help of the, the government and the levy board and Corps of Engineers, gradually uh, pushed them off that land. And uh, by uh, perhaps a miracle or a fluke of, uh, of how the levees moved and the land was developed, uh, these 12 camps have remained. We're doing a little interview. Could you wait just like half an hour? It's a challenging environment and it's a place that was really conducive to people that were willing to do some things for themselves. No contractor would come out here and tell you how to keep a piling that was rotting from under your house from washing away, or how to keep the sand from eroding from under your house. Those are things that people that lived here learned by trying and failing and then trying again. Probably the thing that I find that uh, I enjoy the most are not directed activities. They just come from spending time on the shore of the river and enjoying whatever it is that might wash up. 